Hello and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. You join me outside of my house here in Fort Collins, Colorado with my Polestar 1. If you haven't caught the previous video on this car, yes, I purchased it from Polestar. That whole video will be in the description below. Such a cool car, such a cool story, had to go for it. So what we're gonna do today is go on the first road trip under my ownership. Of course, this car did the Cannonball New York to LA. It was really the advantage for the Lucid Air being a plug-in hybrid that has CCS fast charging. But in this video, we are driving out to Monterey for car week. So Alyssa just decided at the last second to join us. And so uh, she and I will be heading out in the Polestar 1, 1,200 miles out to California. It should be an epic adventure. I'll first tell you about the car. We'll then, of course, go on the road trip and see what happens. Should be a pretty simple, fun, and epic road trip. And here it is. This is my 2021 Polestar 1. They only made this for two or three production years. I think maybe less than 300 ever made it to the U.S., something like that. Um, Alyssa's got something to say. I'm not sure what exactly is going on here. It's just hot. Oh, it's hot in there? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it's pretty toasty out here. We have uh, the car loaded up with our luggage. I'll just show you here. It's just starting to get windy for some reason. We got bags in the trunk. There's not a very a large amount of trunk space back here. Just enough where I can stuff a sweatshirt. And, um, you know, just a little bit about the car if you're not familiar. And, and you can't be faulted for not being familiar because this car is pretty not super well known. There is a, a roughly 35 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack that's broken up into three modules. So there's basically one module here and then two that go down the center. There's two electric motors in the back and then a turbocharged, supercharged four cylinder combustion engine up front. Sorry for some of the wind here. It does support CCS fast charging. So I do have the DC fast charging pins, which is great. I actually need to clean out this area a little bit. And the whole car is made of carbon fiber. It's just crazy cool. Uh, you can see we don't have a license plate right now. And that's because the DMV has taken a while to get us a plate. And so Polestar actually just sent me an, a reissued temporary license plate here. But we don't have any clear tape for me to put it all together. So that's before we leave town, we need to get that sorted. Because surprisingly, Wyoming is actually very particular about that stuff. Um, you would think you'd do whatever you want in Wyoming, but no, Southern Wyoming, I-80, the route we're going, they're always pretty particular. Our tires are certainly not super duper fresh, but you know, plenty enough for this trip. This will probably be the last trip we do on these. I have two brand new sets of wheels and tires to replace these with. So I'm thinking after this, we'll throw on some snow tires, get it ready for winter time. We don't really drive the car much, but, um, yeah, should be absolutely epic. So the road trip. This is the first video on our way out to Monterey. So let's take a look and see what's going on. Talk about the drive modes. It's also my first time road tripping the Polestar 1. Alyssa drove it across the country, New York to Los Angeles. She sure did, and it was a breeze. It was a breeze. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things I'm trying to think about in this car is how do we preserve the drivetrain and the battery pack and all of these things. First time in a long time I've full charged the vehicle. So we're leaving with a full charge. We'll let the cabin cool down, get the nav set, and then we'll hit the road. How's that sound? Perfect. So I have entered in Carmel by the Sea, which is roughly where we're gonna be going in the same the area at least. Calculated. We have not booked hotels yet, which is always a something people book like a year in advance. We're gonna mute her. Access restrictions. She didn't get the message. Let's take a look here. We are in Fort Collins, Colorado, and it wants to go, uh, yeah, we are, we just need to go north up. Thank you, Volvo. Up into Wyoming, across I-80, into Salt Utah, Lake Salt Lake City for dinner, perhaps? Yeah, we can get there. Oh yeah, well it's only six and a half hours. We don't have to charge. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so much freedom. <laughs> I know, this is actually the first combustion road trip I've done and since I think maybe we moved to Colorado. Uh, yeah, because uh, we sold my i3 and haven't road trip with any of them. Oh, no, 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 no. You got that. 
oh, that's right. I picked that up in Florida and drove it up here. And man, that was a breeze. <laughs> it's a breeze driving. <laughs> driving up. electric cars adds a lot of time. Yeah. So this will be really nice. And, uh, you know, of course, if we happen to stop and see a DC fast charger, we'll plug it in. I don't think we've ever really DC fast charged this car before. We've done a couple connection attempts, of course, in preparation for the Cannonball and during the drive. You plugged it in maybe two or three times. Mm -hmm. um, but it's never really been DC charged. So it's never been like fully DC charged, but I charge it for about a good 15, 20 minutes. Oh, at one of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. And uh, yep, we're AC charged up to full. It says we have about 75 miles of full electric, about 90 miles of gas. We'll fill up with uh, fuel before we leave town, get some tape. We'll probably hit that northern jacks on the way out. Yeah. And um, yeah, let's, let's go through and because this is my first road trip in the Polestar. We need to figure out how to reset all of our trips. And I think I do that here. Right. So you can see TM. Since we picked up this car from Polestar, we have put 5,868.5 miles on it. Actually, that's from when we left New York City on the Cannonball. So that's since we've had it had in it. our hands. Yep. Yeah. Because it never went back to them. We didn't want to give it back. So we bought it from Polestar. And that was a whole situation. They made it super easy. I think they had to buy another car to put in their heritage collection. And Super cool of them. And uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna hold reset down on that. There we go, zeroed out. And then I'll come down here and zero out MPG. That'll be really interesting to see our MPG because I'm fairly certain this car is inefficient when we are on uh, combustion. Yes. The other thing is I don't really wanna drive the car in hybrid mode most of the time because the engine just goes on off, on off, on off, on off. And it freaks me out because yeah. this is a car we're gonna have for a long time. And I just, if I want it on, I just want it to stay on. And then when it's off, I just want it to stay in electric. So there's a few tricks where I've been doing. You can drive it in power mode, which keeps the combustion engine on all the time, but it keeps the revs up. It's at like 3000 RPM. It's always spooled up and ready to go. Or I've found recently how I've been driving it is in all wheel drive mode. And what it does is it just runs the engine with the normal drive profile. So it upshifts normally and it's not under any stress. And that takes care of the front axle and the electric motors take care of the rear axle. There's a lot of drive modes, a lot of complication. I've gone through it in many videos on this car. So I think what we'll do is we'll use pure to get out of town. Well, we'll use regular hybrid to get out of town. And then uh, once we jump on the highway, we'll probably lock it in all wheel drive and um, yeah, just use both systems to get us down the road. So should be really fun. A uh, good trip I'm hoping for. Let's uh, recenter ourselves. How do we do that? 2D, this one, I don't know how to go. You can also use Apple Maps. Oh, I think we are centered. I just need to zoom in. Yeah, we can use Apple Maps, but this is, you know, there's really one route. So there we go. The one thing I like about using this system though, is at least for a long road trip, it will prioritize combustion or electric using the nav system. And it's something I've never really tried in the car. Hmm. So I'm gonna leave it in hybrid for now and just see what happens. And I'll put it in B mode so we get some regen, even though we're full, we won't get much. So- Do you know where our nice battery thing is? Cause maybe we should bring that so we can charge. Do you know where that is? Don't know, but uh, we'll see you on the road. Bye bye press cars. Yeah, we had two review cars. Bye-bye car cars. Yeah. Look how good the Rivian looks. Kitted out. Bye, uh, doggos. And uh, Alyssa, you decided last minute to drive out. What was that all about? Because you were going to fly and meet me there. And then you were like, oh, well, if you just wait a couple hours, I can drive out with you. And I was like, well, that saves me a ton of logistics. And uh, so, yeah, what's the... A ton of logistics. There's just yeah, one Yeah, because flight. you were going to fly into San Jose and the events all the way in Monterey. And it's just like... Uh, well, we're likely to going to have to stay in San Jose because everything else is like $800 a night right now. Right. Well, that's like a Motel 6 is like $800 a motel night. Motel 6 was 400 a night. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. And our uh, Paul Blart is right there. He's wait, but I think he can only get you on the way. I'm not really sure. All I know is he sits there unmarked trying to get speed. Kyle does that every time. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that guy. Um, yeah, he just like is there to take, like if you want to enforce speed in our neighborhood, put a police car there, put a, you know, do something. Don't just sneakily take photos of people. Yeah. That, and it's it, not even the police. It's like the government, they, they, it's, it's a hired. private company that approached the government of Fort Collins and said, hey, do you want us to collect extra money for you? Not to do you want to yeah. prevent speeding deaths or anything like that. It's, do you just want extra money? 
Yeah, and it's like the places that they park or I mean like this street. They'll like just, hide in the middle of these trees. Yeah, they'll hide right in there yeah. and totally illegally park and do like every mall cop that we have does illegal things in order to get thirty dollars from people. It's just, it's crazy. just crazy. It's zero points on your license. You can get as many as you want. They just want your money. Right. And you can pretty much fight it and say, because I drive all of our cars and I don't own them. So I just like, yeah, it's not my car and that's not me. <laughs> so then they just take it off. So it's really dumb and it's a waste of money. But that's that's so that's stupid. what we spend money on here in Fort Collins because there's not a lot of crime. So yeah. I, I guess I'll take that. Yeah, true. Anyway, we are off to the north side of Fort Collins where we will get we will get some tape for the license plate so we can get the temporary, uh, the updated temporary tag in the car and then what else do we have to do um we gotta fill up with fuel we'll get snacks and waters i haven't eaten yet today it's 3 p.m so we should get some food and then our goal is we have to get past salt lake city today because we need to be i don't i don't know the time is but the acura zdx is being unveiled tomorrow evening and i know i saw that right <laughs> and an r1s right here Ooh, uh, great an Acura ZDX is being unveiled tomorrow evening and we have to be there to film that. Yes. So we got to hammer down. And we have, well, we're, we're pretty good at doing that, especially this car. Yeah, this car is used to that kind of driving. Yeah. So there we go. Let's keep it moving. Just rolling through the downtown Fort Collins area. Just absolutely love it here. That restaurant, Lulu's Bistro, great. <laughs> Best Chinese food around. Best Chinese food around. Really is. And it's Alice approved. It is Alice approved, who is Drew's wife, who came straight from China. So she, she knows she what's knows. legit's food. That's right. Uh, but yeah, we absolutely love this downtown area. It's so quaint and nice and everything that you need. And then our next favorite restaurant is Still, Still Whiskey Steak. Yeah. That's Kyle. If you guys ever come in town to say hello to us, that's where you will be eating. That's right. So don't be a vegetarian. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we are now just pulling into our first stop. We are uh, five and a half miles into our trip so far. <laughs> <laughs> really making headway. Yeah, we Since... haven't turned on the combustion engine yet, but this is always kind of the last major fuel stop on the way out of town. I have to think about what side the fuel is in. I think the back yeah it's on my side yep so let's go get this plugged in here this is always like this is uh, uh it's more of like a ranch supply store but uh, they got coffee and ice cream and yeah i don't snacks. think we've ever been in this one yeah we always go to the one there's another one like right down the road but yeah. this is more for all the ranches on the north side of town which are just unbelievable so i have to depressurize the fuel tank by hitting a button they keep the uh it says preparing fuel tanks now ready so i can shut it off and fuel it up it keeps the fuel tank pressurized. Most plug-in hybrids do because, um, you know, if you happen to just drive on electric most of the time, uh, keeping the fuel tank pressurized extends the life of the fuel, actually. So it's 104 degrees out, according to the car. It's toasty. It's toasty out there. So we'll get this uh, plugged in. You want to go start snacks? I'll meet you inside in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So here is Jackson. All the stuff that they have. Triggers, Yetis. I mean, anything that you possibly need that they have it here. Eggs. Um, and then way more stuff like camping gear in the back and then a bunch of horse feet as well. But I think the first thing we'll get here is some um, jerky. Um, and then I'll show you around some more. So my favorite aisle is the dog toy aisle. It's got great Kong dog toys. Blue loves this toy. It's actually, uh, they have these for horses, but Blue loves to just uh, mangle on that. And then it's just... So many fun toys here. I'll go wide for you guys. It's just so tempting. So tempting. Hey. Howdy. Uh, these are dog treats, so we might need to move on. Oh. But I had well, to we, get... don't need, we don't eat dog treats. No, no, no. <laughs> we got snacks. We got to get waters. We got tape. Let's rock and roll. We're getting everything all taped up and ready to go for the temp license plate. We just need one more strip and then we see. Maybe, maybe two more. Maybe two more. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The thing is, um, yeah, I'm just probably going to put this in the back window for now, but uh, you just never know if, uh, rather just have it all as one piece. If we do decide to mount it on the outside, we just don't have to worry about it. I also printed two of these. 
Oh, great. Yeah, just in case. Yep. Yeah, and I have it in my email too, so. Okay, so now we are good, locked, weather sealed. Even though it's going in the back. <laughs> Even though it's going in the back. I mean, we could put it back here, but um, nah. I don't know. I kind of don't like the way it looks on the car, so yeah. I'd rather like when it's at car week, just take this out. Mm -hmm. So uh, cool, well, we don't need to take, we'll keep it back there for now. Throw this in the uh, window. Beautiful. <laughs> Good enough. Let's go. Being calculated. Thank you. So we got some snacks here. We got Dots pretzels, which are really good if you've never tried them. The jerky, waters, peanut butter filled pretzels, and then we also got a power converter. So just in case we need to use our laptops and charge it while we're in the car. Yeah, so. I imagine we'll have some editing to do. So yeah. The, the other thing about this road trip is we're just filming the road trip out. We'll have other videos at Monterey, of course. Um, I'm fairly certain we're going to have to leave this car in California. I am 100% certain that's going to happen. Yeah, so we got to find a place to leave it once we're there because I thought I had this lady on mute. Um, yeah, I have to go to the to Lucid on next Monday and then to the Rivian factory on Tuesday. So I got to fly from Rivian to Lucid which is really cool. And you need to get back here for something. You can't drive it back. Uh, no, I just need to get back to the dogs Yeah. and then prep for Germany, so. Yeah, because we're going to Europe for a few weeks. Um, yeah, so we got a lot of, uh, we, we're not really sure how this is all gonna play out yet, but. When we, do we ever? We know enough people where we'll make it work. Yeah. So off we go into the beautiful distance. So actually this area is where we're looking um, for our ranch. And uh, found a couple places, uh, but within the market right now, we just are kind of holding off. Won't be anytime soon. Won't be anytime soon, but we are we are perusing and browsing, but it's definitely within this area, but more towards the mountains. So our favorite road, Risk Canyon, is right up this way, and then Pooter is right down that way. So that's the goal. That's right. We're just merging up to highway speeds now, 65, 70 miles an hour. So what I'm gonna do is kick on the engine in all wheel drive mode. And so I'm gonna go here, we'll select all wheel drive, and now the combustion engine is on. And what that's gonna be doing is just powering the front axle. The rear axle will also supply some juice. And I'm curious how far we can go until we're out of battery on the rear axle. It should help with fuel economy, take the load off the combustion engine, and it's gonna stop it from turning on and off and on and off. Now there are situations where you just don't really need the combustion engine on, which was basically us leaving town. Uh, so we just kicked it on, of course, and uh, yeah, this is how I think we'll drive it out to California. If we were to leave it in performance mode, uh, it just, it will never go to top gear. It just spins up the whole time. So this is a great way for it to stay at lower RPMs. And even if we were to use the charge or the hold settings, the combustion engine still turns on and off very overactively. And uh, it just seems a little bit too, I don't know, aggressive to me. So we'll just keep it in this. It, uh, you know, this engine is also in use in non-plug-in hybrid Volvos. So it's designed to just run for miles and miles. So uh, no, no real concerns uh, for this. Let's just uh, eat the miles. We got 1,200 to go. So we're just outside of Fort Collins now, driving into Wyoming. I still got a couple more minutes until we're in Wyoming, but we pretty much live right on the Wyoming border. We're like the last city. We're like 30 minutes away from the border, I would say, yeah, maybe less. give or take. Um, if you take the highway up there, it could be way less than that because you could just totally rip up there. As long as the wind is low, it's very windy on the highway. I yeah, on I-25, but we're taking the back roads, about to cross through Livermore. Yep, we're going to Laramie and then west. Yeah. It's just absolutely beautiful out here. We're very excited for this drive. It's going to be a good one because we never get to drive this route ever with an EV, so, because there's no well, charging infrastructure. I just came back through here in the Model S like a week ago. Right, yeah. But I haven't been good. in a long time, well, so. I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited. <laughs> we are now leaving Colorado. That's that sign on the left. And entering 
Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, the I-25 gets a much bigger Wyoming sign. <laughs> but we are now in Wyoming. We are still heading over uh, to I-80 and Laramie where we'll hook up with that road. And uh, yep, just, just keep heading west. So Laramie, Wyoming, got a nasty bug mark right there. Yeah, and a crack of a chill. And a cabaldi out. That happened um, during the, whatever it's called, the, 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 the thing that we went on. <laughs> the cannonball? The cannonball, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, this is Laramie, you got a lot of cows around. Yeah. We'll take a look ahead so they can see what we're doing. We're about to merge on the I-80 right up here take a look and uh, then we'll be on there for pretty much two days. Two days. Two days roughly. Actually we'll be there tomorrow at this time. So one day. One day. This is what middle of Wyoming looks like. It really is just perfect. It's barren and beautiful. We still have 350 miles of range on the fuel. We have used quite a bit of battery. We're at like 60% state of charge on the battery, so it is pushing along. And even with that, I'm actually surprised. We did gain some elevation, but our efficiency is only 30 miles per gallon so far, which is like not great. We've done 130 miles into the journey. So yeah, my impression of the combustion engine not being that efficient um, is true. And uh, I think Volvo also agreed with it. That, you know, it's supercharged uh, at low RPM, although it does have a clutch disconnect, but there just seems to be like a lot of internal friction which, with this engine. And so the new Volvo turbo only engines seem to be much more efficient than this early version. Um, there, I forget the exact code, but the turbo super super turbo ones. Um, anyway, we've been on the road for two hours, and um, we still have 350 miles of range of fuel predicted, which is exactly what it was when we left the house. So the and it's a, this thing has a tiny fuel tank actually. It's only I don't know 12 gallons, 15 gallons I think. 15. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's not tiny, I guess. You know, like I remember my dad's V10 M5 had a 10 gallon roughly fuel tank and that was the least efficient vehicle you could imagine so um, yeah anyway off we go continuing on just nice pilot assist doing the job just ask me to touch the wheel every once in a while but there's honestly nothing we can hit here and uh, yeah just cruising it's been great great sound system in this thing truly great sound system don't you think Alyssa yeah it's definitely uh, it sounds good to the ears that's right, we got Spotify set to extreme audio quality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the maximum speed we can travel using pilot assist. If we want to go 87 or more, pilot assist no longer does steering. It just does adaptive cruise control. So at least we get one mile an hour more than Tesla capped at 85. Anyway, just sunny. Sun's about to go down. We're about to be blinded here but just gorgeous views. Love Wyoming. And uh, yeah, well, we're almost pretty much exactly halfway through Wyoming. So we'll continue throttling down. We are now, I don't know, more than halfway through Wyoming. If you take a look right here on the display, you'll see that's where we left. And this is Wyoming and that's about where we are coming into Rock Springs. We've driven, uh, let's see how far we've driven. We have driven. 259.7 miles. We are at exactly half a tank of fuel. However, we are now down to roughly 25 or 28 percent state of charge on the high voltage battery. Now, keep in mind, I've locked the car in this all wheel drive mode, which keeps the combustion engine on non stop. Now, my understanding is all wheel drive is going to try and keep some energy into the battery pack so that if it actually does need to work as an all wheel drive system, it can still send power to the electric rear axle 
So I imagine we're just gonna kind of sit at 25% state of charge from now on. What that also means is perhaps our efficiency will start to decrease from a fuel standpoint, but uh, time will tell because we also lose a little bit of elevation. We're at about 6,500 feet of elevation right now. 6431, excuse me. Uh, so pretty close. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so so all is good here. We uh, pretty much have, have uh, you know, lost all of our electric advantage at this point, and now we're just running straight combustion. I think on the next fuel line, I'm gonna at least try if we just run hybrid mode for a little bit and actually see if we start to get better economy or not. My guess is no, but we'll find out, so. Onwards, just lots of trucks here, and uh, yeah, not, not much to report on in the middle of Wyoming. Lots of signs for the Continental Divide, so that's what we're learning about. Yeah, well, we passed two different Continental Divide signs. I mean, it's pretty large. Yeah, so maybe it was the entrance and then the departure? I don't know. I thought it was like a line, but I didn't see any dots going across or anything. No. <laughs> They're not gonna dot out like 200 miles. Yeah, just like spray paint or have the little dotted line. Like yeah, that yeah, through the through the mountains and the plateaus <laughs> yeah, yeah. across a cow or two. Yeah. I was checking to see what that thing was. I'm not really sure. Don't know. Well, this is pretty boring. Yep. I got one hand blocking the sun because it's just scorching my eyes. But we are stopping here in Rock Springs to get some. Hibachi at Sapio, which we've been to before, and it was really, really, it was good for, you know, middle of Wyoming. I was just there last week. Oh, really? You went, yeah? Yeah, I went, went here for Hibachi, It's because uh, it's at the supercharger. Oh. Yeah, so I supercharged, had Hibachi, and then hit the road. Oh, nice. We won't be able to plug this into anything here. No, you could plug it into one of them Exxon stations over there. Yeah, we could get uh, fuel, and maybe we, we will do that. Uh, since we're stopping, but let's go. Uh, yeah, so great Hibachi here in Rock Springs. This is kind of the happening town for the couple hundred miles in every direction. Yes. <laughs> hey, I got a GT Max. I Hi. like Rock Springs. I actually could live here. This is a cool town. You could live here? Yeah, I like this town. Show everyone around. Okay. So now it's all coming back to me. We went to that Petco with one of um, our fosters, the English Mastiff that weighed over 200 pounds. And we got him a Trito there. You see, I don't even need navigation to find my way to the Hibachi place. You just know. I just know Rock Springs, Wyoming, how to get to the Hibachi place. They had good soup. Good soup, really good soup. Oh, yeah. They give you so much food and it's very reasonably priced. And here it is. Yeah, with the, with the sumo wrestling. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great spot. Great and spot. if you look right here, here's the supercharger straight ahead. Yep. And uh, let's just take a scroll by. I think I see a of course. Connecticut Model Y Cornell University In license plate white. frame. I know. Yeah. Right, and they have um, this funny named coffee place. I can't remember what it's called. Oh yeah, Deja, Deja Brew. Brew. <laughs> yeah, so we'll park, uh, you know, somewhere near the uh, supercharger. Wow. Just to make it feel like we're doing something cool. But what we're not. It? We're lame. Driving a combustion car. Oh, man. There's another car from Connecticut over there. There's a Murdoch. Smoke Murdoch. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's back this sucker on in and get some hibachi. This is some legit food in the middle of Wyoming. It's just awesome. Well, we just finished up a truly great din dinner here at the Sapporo Japanese Steakhouse. We got the Polestar sitting right here. I think probably the first time this car has ever been to Wyoming would be my guess. Just looks pretty out of place here, to be honest. Um, nice Model 3 charging up just over there. Um, Non-performance, but it's got the spoiler and some blacked out stuff that I'm not sure those wheels match up with when they did the blacked out trim little modifications here and there. Alyssa ran to a store to get some shampoo, which is interesting. Beautiful mountains there in the background here. Rock Springs, sun just going over. Um, we need to be in Monterey uh, by 6.30 p.m. tomorrow, and it's currently pretty late, so I'm not exactly sure 
what time we're going to be arriving there, but it means we need to drive at least for another three to four hours tonight, which is no problem. It's, uh, you know, 8.50 right now. So we'll drive till midnight, something like that. And uh, we'll see where that gets us. I'm guessing somewhere near Wendover, Utah, near the Salt Flats. We'll wake up early and finish the drive. I think that's gonna be our best plan. Get all your shampoo? Yeah. Okay. Um, we actually are gonna switch drivers because I got some emails to put some final arrangements together for filming shoots that we have going on at uh, Car Week. I need to like sort out the electric Maseratis and some other stuff. Uh, you can't quite see it yet. Yes, you can. The Polestar logo shines up through the glass. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Okay, let's go. Oh, it's 7.50, not 8.50. You know, I'm really bad at uh, reading watches and clocks. What, what, what I did a clip where I, I was backwards on this one. Oh, you can't read hands? Yeah, I'm not so good at that. That's all right. That's not really our generation's thing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, not really a watch guy or a timepiece kind of guy. Anyway, coming out strong. Oh, I was careful. Yeah, what's your drive mode strategy here? Um, I, I just need to know where to go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> just Sweet drive mode strategy is knowing where to go. Yeah, just uh, going to leave it in hybrid mode, I guess? Yeah, I mean, that's what you said on the last clip that we were going to be doing. On right? the next tank was the idea. Uh, well, then, yeah, probably not. I don't know. Okay, well, let's throw you in AWD. No, because we got to let the engine warm back yeah. up. Yep, yeah. you just missed it. Nope, we're going for it. Hold on, folks. Don't go too hard, Alyssa. That's a little too hard. What, are you trying to blow up the engine? It hasn't warmed up yet. It's a car. It's this is why plug-in hybrids are your problem. Or, or a problem. Look at the rays coming up over that mountain there, Alyssa. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's like uh, crazy to look at, actually. Um, in typical out of spec fashion, our clean windshield has gone buggy. Dirty, dirty. Dirty, dirty. But uh, continuing through, beautiful views. The rays, the rays are shining. That's crazy. Wow. And I'm emailing people. Oh, nice Prevo Greyhound bus. Hell yeah, brother. I've become quite a bit of a bus enthusiast. Uh, that, that's been a while. Yeah, for a, for a long time. Since like since we got the Rebel, pretty much is when it all sparked. Yeah. So. Uh, yep. There's a great uh, there's a cop in front of us. Just so you know, you're going ten over. Yeah, that that lowered us down fifteen miles an hour right there. That's just insane. Yeah, when you push it once, it goes five miles an hour, and when you push it hold, it goes one. But we got an unmarked Tahoe up here. Uh, the Tahoe. The Tahoe. And you can tell the little pods on the roof that he's packing. Oh, and he's got the brake lights. Oh, no, just running lights. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. Just gorgeous. That is a orange sun. Very orange. And it just freaked out pilot assist. Yep. <laughs> this is a very Gen 1 uh lane centering system i like it yeah i like it too it's pretty basic it kind of tells you when it can't do it it's very human. yeah it's just a little bit sloppy yeah <laughs> but what a road tripper so far this thing's been great we still got i don't know half a tank of fuel roughly Let's show the viewers here would you believe that would you believe that a little less than half a tank and uh yeah wow the views <laughs> more sunset action I mean we're really bringing that beautiful Wyoming content to YouTube right here <laughs> I actually don't even know what to talk about because it's not an electric car road trip it's like we drove down the street and we'll hopefully make it got point A to point B pretty quickly Wow, this whole like gas car thing really should take off. The range is amazing. The recharge times are fast. Yeah. But I think it's kind of funny that we have to manage this PHEV 
system. I mean, you can just leave it in hybrid and forget about it. Not just being weird and want to make this thing last for as long as possible. Yeah, well, that's what you did in the cannonball. You just left it in hybrid the whole time. Did I leave it in hybrid the whole time? I don't think I did. No? No, you told me to have it in um, all-wheel drive the whole time. Okay, well, hopefully you did. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Cruising along. Welcome to the beautiful state of Utah. Coming in now, let's get it down. There we go, Utah, baby. Views on views, as some would say. Just a gorgeous freaking lighting scheme going on through here. Alyssa, how's the drive going? Easy peasy. How much fuel we got? And we're gonna drop into Salt Lake, so maybe we'll fuel up in Salt Lake. Yeah, sounds good. Stretch the legs. Stretch the legs, that's right. Welcome to Park City, Utah. Another Sinclair fueling station. And time for some juice. So, this was a sponsored uh, wallet. Yeah. Exter. Exter. Not sponsored for this video. They no. just, you know, sent us some and uh, truly love it. Truly do. It's a nice wallet. So we'll let that sucker go. Uh, we're down to an indicated, what, 20 miles of range? Uh, 20 miles of fuel range. Fuel range, yeah. Well, because we're an all wheel drive, it keeps roughly 20 or 25% in the high voltage battery. Yeah. I haven't looked at the gauges. I took a quick little nap. But uh, basically we are just, uh, yeah, again, just east of Salt Lake up here in Park City. Beautiful area, we love Park City. And uh, we'll blast down into Salt Lake and then out of Salt Lake heading west across the uh, salt flats. So that'll be really cool. And uh, I don't know if we'll be energetic enough, to, enough tonight to go check out the Bonneville salt flats, but at least whenever we drive this back from California, assuming we're coming back on I-80, I would like to get it out on the salt flats and do a top speed run <laughs> and then immediately to a car wash to get all the salt out of it. Yeah. But you never can get all the salt out of it. No. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, look at this. Already got how much range in that short period of time? <laughs> a a couple hundred miles. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so fast. Then we are full. Look at that. Almost 15 gallons. That's the uh, biggest fuel stop I think I've ever had in this car. I don't typically run it this low. Do you remember on the cannonball your the most amount of fuel you put in? I average. I don't know. I always. Went you filled up pretty early because yeah, you were waiting for us to charge. I was always around like fifty or sixty dollars. Yeah, I think this might be the biggest fill. Just about fifteen gallons of fuel. So it's definitely got a fifteen-gallon tank. Mosquitoes everywhere. We need to get the heck out of here. So let's do that as soon as possible. Yeah, nice. In we go. Alyssa, I don't know why she drives with a blanket, but we'll put it back to my seating position. I like it chilly. Can you move the uh, blanket, please? Thank you. Let's look at the stats from the previous leg. Oh, so many freaking uh, mosquitoes out there. No, I got bit a few times, I can tell. Yeah, so it leaves about 25% state of charge in the battery pack when you run in that particular mode. Um, it's not a fair comparison, I was thinking, to do fuel range uh, economy between that tank and this one because we're pretty much out of high voltage battery. Yeah. And we left full. Anyway, experiments to continue, but we did 430 miles on that stretch. We got 29.7, so just about 30 miles to the gallon. And we definitely noticed that going down when uh, the car stopped using the electric boost uh, and, and basically keeping the battery topped up for every bit that it used. We averaged 72 miles an hour. It took us almost six hours of drive time. So that's great. Let's uh, get back on the road and do some more. Ooh. We are off. 
Yeah, I've been kind of like thinking I want a big diesel truck. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I feel like oh, I just like there's so much towing I have to do and towing with the Rivian. Colton's dad's truck. Well, oh, he just bought a new truck actually, but his old one was it's really really good. Perfect. He's got a diesel AT4. Yeah. And then his Model Three. <laughs> right. His Model Three and his Mini Cooper. He's got like all the weird stuff. But yeah, his truck is freaking sick. Yeah. Um, anyway. Off we go then. I am driving in hybrid mode for now just to kind of see what happens. So we still have 25% state of charge. I figured we may as well use all of it uh, on this stretch. So especially as we're going to lose elevation into Salt Lake, we uh, may be even able to stay in electric mode for some of this driving. So oh, oh, oh. just going to maximize efficiency here. Uh, an interesting trick with the Polestar, by the way, is when you lock it in pure mode or where I have it set individual is also pure. Uh, the way it will work is it will actually let you drain all of the high voltage battery out. When you're in hybrid mode, it gets you to like seven to 10% and holds you there. Uh, but pure lets you go all the way down to zero before it kicks on the combustion engine. The reason I don't want to do that on a road trip is I'm not sure if we'll have charging tonight and I don't want to leave the battery completely dead. So hybrid mode safe for it to sit is no problem. Uh, it's a little bit lower than Polestar recommends for daily use, but it's, it's no big deal. So here we are on the highway, back up to speed, cruising along, beautiful views. Let's continue. Well, as you can see, we're going downhill and I want to show you the gauges. We burned all the electricity coming up to the summit and now we're dropping into Salt Lake. So we're actually regening on the way down. And what I'm curious to see is right now when you have this little water droplet, the tick mark down here, it means, okay, we're just in normal hybrid mode. We've lost all of the benefit of our plug-in battery. Now we're just lugging around this big, heavy, expensive, high voltage battery pack that we get zero use out of. And this is why I kind of don't like plug-in hybrids because a lot of people just never plug them in and then we're just hauling around all this weight. A regular mild hybrid or just regular hybrid, series hybrid, works really, does work really well because you don't, you have, you recapture electricity on regen and things like that. But We've lost all the benefit of our plug-in system. What I'm curious is, will there be enough elevation loss on the way down for this thing to then go back and say, oh, you have enough energy to actually use in hybrid mode to gain some more driving? We'll find out, but for now, we're just charging up on the way down. And just a short while later, we're following a car with uh, new running lights on up here, so we're just gonna get in the lane next to them and hopefully avoid that, but you can see we have regened enough where we actually can use battery power. It went from zero to two miles and jumped up uh, right there. And uh, when we accelerate now, I actually can do it uh, like this, fully electric without the combustion engine kicking on. So that's why it is nice to have even just a small amount of battery storage in a vehicle. So you're not just burning all the deceleration forces to waste heat. Anyway, being maybe a little bit too nerdy, but uh, these are the things I think about as I drive makes the long trips go by a little bit nicer. Rolling into Salt Lake there in the distance with all that dang light pollution. Um, I'm just kidding, it's actually really pretty. But uh, yeah, just uh, rolling up and we're gonna be passing our favorite restaurant every single time we've passed through here. So far, we have not been able to go to the Red Iguana and well, it's been have, very upsetting. We have been to the Red Iguana. Yes, once once on a road trip. Once, but every single time we've passed through since, we haven't been able to go. It's been very sad. I feel like we have been twice. Maybe twice, but yep, just uh, passing on through. We really, we really don't live very far away from Salt Lake. I know, like what, five hours? Five and a half. Yeah, we never so go though. We never go to Salt Lake. No, we only, we only drive through. We're not huge skiers, so we don't have the desire to come out here. And plus, all of Colorado is just as great as skiing, yeah, so. Skiing at home. Yeah, so. Yeah, no, no need. No need, but it is a fun place to be. Yeah, we do have a few friends in the Salt Lake area that we should maybe just coordinate. Spend a weekend out here or something. We really haven't spent much time in the, in the area at all. No, we literally always just, yeah, just pass through. I think the last time we spent time was when we were on that the big road trip in the Model 3 with the dogs. Yeah. And we went up to Park City and hung out for the day and... Yeah, that was kind of it. That was kind of it. 
and that was during the summer, so. But I've been coming here skiing my whole life. Of course, of course. This is a very Dave Cotter place to go. Only the best for the best. Well, he's an Alta guy. Oh, yeah. Not Snowbirds. Is Snowbirds harder? Well, Alta Snowbirds the same mountain, but Snowbird allows snowboarders. He's not uh, into that. Oh, oh, okay. So, he's a hardcore skier. Yeah. So he likes Alta. If you look right there, that is the lookover for the Wendover Bonneville Salt Flats. It's really just the Bonneville Salt Flats. It's where top speed runs are done. We've made videos going top speed over there. It's uh, Bureau of Land Management, no speed limits, full send. You just want to be respectful to the surface. No donuts, no nothing stupid, but you can really go and as long as you're not digging any ruts, have some fun out there. It is almost midnight, so we're not going to do that, but we're just cruising along uh, on the stretch between Salt Lake City and Wendover. It's literally straight as an arrow for almost 90 miles, and we're about 10 miles out of Wendover. We've been cruising along nicely, and um, interestingly, I've been playing with all the drive modes. I actually have it in hybrid drive mode right now. As long as you're going at constant speed with no traffic, the engine just stays on. It's great. It's no problem. But as soon as we slow down for a car in front, as soon as you lift off the throttle, it shuts off the engine. It just drives me nuts. But it works okay for this kind of middle of the desert cruising. And uh, that way, uh, because the battery is flat, what I didn't want to have happen was when we put it in all-wheel drive mode to have it charge up the high voltage battery from the combustion engine. There's just no need uh, because we typically try and stay, stay at hotels that have chargers. And that's what we've done tonight. We've booked a hotel in West Wendover, Nevada or Wendover, Utah, not sure which, uh, but it's coming up within five minutes of here. And there are literally no good hotels in this town. Yep. If you look ahead, you'll see just the lights of the town up here uh, as we're coming into it. So we booked a comfort inn. Quality Inn. Quality Inn. And Quality Inn, they have a Blink Charger. Melissa? Yeah, they have a Blink Charger. Okay, so we'll have a level two, hopefully EVSE. We're getting there late enough where we probably won't be blocking an electric car. And uh, worst case, if there's someone there, it's no problem. There are DC fast chargers in that town. We can always zap up if we need to, but uh, yeah, even if we can't charge, it's no problem in this. If we can, we'll throw it on the charger. And again, this thing has a bigger battery than my lease. So it really does make a lot of sense to get some energy in this thing. But we wanna be mindful that we don't block battery electric vehicles from charging on needed infrastructure, especially when we have fuel as a backup. So we'll keep all those considerations in mind as we head into our hotel. We'll get the destination set and we'll be on the way. And here we are at 11.51 p.m. arriving to our hotel. Now I believe it's 10.51 p.m. just on that side of the street over there uh, where that big casino is. I believe they are in Nevada and one hour behind here. Now, my understanding is they do have chargers. Oh, in the back. In the back? Okay. Let's see if anyone's using them. And if they're open, we'll snag one. May as well. Because, uh, yeah, anyone who's here probably has DC fast charging and there's DC chargers in town. So it's kind of like whoever gets to the plug first and I'm it's all cool for me as long as you're charging and it doesn't matter if you're plugged in or not you sure they are I thought I read something that said it was in the back oh there they are to your right here. Great. Well, there's two available, so we won't even be blocking anyone. We'll take this spot right these here. Newer ones, too. Yeah, these are the new Blink, uh, up to 80 amps, actually, these units. These are pretty good. We actually just had a conversation with the CEO of Blink recently, and um, he was pretty cool. He's like, Yeah, we have a lot of like old dying chargers, but uh, they're going to work on retiring those and getting new ones in. So there we go. Let's. Uh, Juice this sucker up, shall we? 
Okay, well I have uh, plugged in the car. Oh wait, it just went away. Connect, there we go. Swipe to start charging. Is that all we need to do? Uh, connect the charger plug to the EV. Fairly certain we are connected. Unless it wants, this one's blinking. So maybe I selected this one without a screen. So if you take a look here, this one's blink, 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 blink. So let's try that. We'll swap, we'll connect that. Unless I'll hand you this one. There we go, things are happening. Your vehicle is charging. So I just must have gotten the two units confused. It's interesting because you sort of have the master control unit, this thing, and then this is sort of the secondary uh, with no screen, which is pretty interesting here. They say it's a 14 kilowatt charger. Wow. This this can only take, uh, I don't know, 10 or 11. It's a 48 amp onboard charger, which is great. So um, but I'm not, not seeing that it is, it is actually charging. What does it say? 5 a.m. It'll be ready to go. Good. And we're planning on leaving at 8. Yeah. So, seems good to me. Sweet. Well, uh, actually, my phone thinks it's 10.56 a.m. because it thinks we're in Nevada. It's a Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Kit Kat. All right. Well, uh, cool. Good day of driving. Let's grab our bags and go to bed. This is kind of funny. There's an Ionic 5 right here that uh, didn't even plug into the level 2 charger. What's that all about? You could start each day with a full charge. They're road tripping either to or from California. <laughs> Interesting things. And good morning from bright and sunny Wendover, Utah. Uh, my understanding, I was talking to some of the hotel folks, uh, this whole town is in mountain time zone, and then it will switch about three to four miles outside of town over to uh, 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 Pacific time zone. So the Polestar's fully charged. I preconditioned it. It's looking good. Alyssa, that was not a bad hotel. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's get on the road today. So at the hotel, uh, they have these Blink chargers like I was mentioning. I am a Blink member. I don't believe it costs anything to be a Blink member. So I paid 39 cents per kilowatt hour, which seems quite expensive for overnight level two charging. Um, I think level two charging, yeah, somewhere in that 15 to 25 cent per kilowatt hour range seems reasonable. Honestly, a lot of hotels should offer it for free, but I have to say that our hotel room here tonight was only $86 or something like that. It's the cheapest hotel I've had in years and it was it was fine. It was one of those enter from the outdoor situations, but it really wasn't bad. Um, if you're not a Blink member and you just pay with a card upon arrival, you pay 49 cents per kilowatt hour, which is too much for level two charging. So um, yeah, I would say for what we need with this car, probably spent more money than we'll actually save with the electricity, but it is kind of cool to maximize the plug-in systems. So let's get out. I think we'll look for some Starbucks. We got a rip to California today. So jumping inside the Polestar, the automatic door handles don't always keep themselves open. We will turn on the car. You can see fully charged. It's predicting 73 miles of electric range in hybrid. If I put us to pure electric, it says 78 miles of electric driving. And we've just been cruising on the highway. So that's very impressive for sure. We have just over three quarters of a tank of fuel. We did 572 miles yesterday. And uh, how far do we have today to go? Seven hundred and fourteen miles. Seven hundred fourteen miles. So let's do it. This is the route. Just taking I eighty all the way. Well, we are just about to merge on the highway. If you take a look at the gauge cluster here, we are in all-wheel drive mode, but the engine hasn't connected. It's still doing its cold start cycle. Um, Alyssa said we merge onto the highway here, but I'm not so convinced. That 
this is the case. Usually you merge on where you merged off. Oh, well, I know that's uh, not always the case around here, which is why I thought you had nav running and you're like, yes, this is the way. So, <laughs> not the way. <laughs> U-turn. Um, okay, so as we warm up the uh, combustion engine a little bit, the car is just doing that automatically. We uh, can't get Starbucks because it's, I mean, we could, but I don't want to go inside the casino to get it, it just adds time. So we'll just, uh, I guess, head on the road in the direction of Westerly. Well, we found the correct entrance and we know this area quite well over here. This is the Tesla supercharger. I was actually just there in the Model S and had massively derated charging speeds, like really not a healthy version two supercharger, needs some love. The EA station's actually down the street, uh, pretty far off the highway, but uh, the supercharger's at a great spot. They just need to expand with new version three or version four chargers. So up we go onto the highway now, and uh, we got 713 miles, 10 hours and 45 minutes today. Should really be no problem at all. And uh, very much looking forward to the drive. The Polestar has been an epic uh, mile muncher so far it's we have the dampers all set in the middle position which is um, you know still pretty firm we could have we should, probably should have backed them all off for the road trip perhaps on the return I'll loosen them up and set them uh, for some more comfort cruising but for now we'll get up to 80 miles an hour which is the speed limit so we can go faster than that and yeah, the EA station's just over there all the way down there somewhere. Well, beautiful day for some driving, 82 degrees and sunny. Well, we're just cruising through construction zones and beautiful scenery off in the distance here. Definitely love this I-80 road. If any of you have a chance to drive it, it is just so cool, pretty amazing scenery. And um, yeah, can't recommend it enough. This is what uh, American road trips are all about as we scooch over this way. We'll get on the other side of the rumble strip. Well, looks like they're doing a little bit of road construction here. We're just going slow. We've just on our way over to Winnemucca. 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 Is that how you say it? Uh -huh. uh, we always get confused. And uh, it's so funny driving an electric car most of the time, you really do learn all the towns where chargers are in. Uh, it, it is kind of good for exploration, actually, because it's like, oh, yeah, I know. I wouldn't know Winnemucca if I just drove a gas car and only stopped for fuel right off the highway. So you do get to learn a little bit of the towns in an EV, whether or not that's what you're looking for. I don't you know. That's up to you. I enjoy it. Uh, I, I'm actually kind of like annoyed with how much range this car has and really? how quickly it charges. I'm like, oh, I want to like walk around and take a break. And, and you know, of course, if you if you were like when we had dinner last night, we weren't charging. It's like, well, we're not making progress, at least in an electric car. When you stop, it's charging. Something's happening to get you down the road. And uh, yeah, not, not the case here. So either way, this is still much faster uh, to get, get places. So that's always good. Yeah, uh, a lot faster. I think I just prefer road tripping an electric car because it gives you something to think about too. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, how fast should I go to make it to that charger? And how much should I charge up? And it's like always a little bit of a game. And this, it's just like full. And then you'll figure it out when it says you need fuel because there's fuel at every exit. So I guess I just like to be inconvenienced. Yeah, you just like, you like a little bit more adventure and not just point A to point B. Yeah, so. I, would, I would agree. But uh, we've been in construction for like 30 minutes. I don't know how many cones they purchased in the state of Nevada, but look, it just goes on as far as the eye can see in both directions. Uh, honestly, they probably should just do it section by section. They could have saved, you know, tremendous amount of money on these cones. <laughs> Hire me for governor. The thoughts of a combustion car owner. <laughs> <laughs> so we're cruising down into the desert. We just got a call from 
our friends at Autel. They make a whole bunch of, uh, of course, EVSE, uh, you know, basically level two chargers and DC fast chargers. And they called and said, our 240 kilowatt DC fast charger is ready for shipment. But where the heck are we gonna install it? <laughs> you see, we were supposed to have the out of spec hub, but we couldn't get a garage door in. So that, like the HOA just blocked that whole plan. So we could put it at the powerhouse at CSU um, in the parking lot, which I, I think that might be a great option because it's kind of downtown. There's a 50 kilowatt EV go station right across the street. And what if we just replace the EV go station? It doesn't work. Uh, it, pitch does, it does work now. It does? Yeah, it works now. And it, they only have a 50 kilowatt connection. We want, we want a big juicy, you know, we're gonna need a 500 kVA transformer, ideally to put two of these in one day. So, yeah, I'd like it to be something that's worthwhile for people to put it in. We could put it right off the highway on I-25. We can just do what charging companies do, at least a space, have Xcel Energy come in and drop it in, make it a public charger. Or we could put it at Colton's shop and make it a private charger just for out of spec. I don't know. I think it'd be cool to have another public charger and go through the financials of what that goes through. And maybe... Yeah, we would never make money from it, but maybe at least cover the demand charge would be the idea. So we have a lot to explore, a lot to think about as to where we're going to install this thing. The nice thing is, is uh, most businesses want chargers and it, it, it wouldn't cost them anything. We would just say, hey, we're dropping in our charger, but I want it to be close to home uh, because if it does break, I want to be able to run over and coordinate fixing it because I don't want to put in shitty infrastructure. Thankfully, no, I have not. used their chargers and they rock. Yeah. So that's always good. But it'll be interesting to see what uh, charge point operators go through firsthand operating a public charger. Just one unit, but it's better than nothing. It's, You've got to start somewhere. You're crazy. So, dang. Yeah, I got to call my friend Dan at Excel and be like, dude, where is Excel Energy will run the power for free, which is like the most expensive part of the whole thing that utility provider says, you know what, we'll just put you, you know, we'll put in the transformer, we'll run the conduit out of the transformer, we'll get you everything to where you just drop the charger in. And we already have the charger that we just need to drop in. So in my head, it sounds really easy. In practice, maybe not so much. You are a dreamer. <laughs> and I'm the realist. Yeah, but we'll, I think we got to put it either in town or off the highway. I, it can't be, I think those are our two options. It needs to be for long distance travel or inner city urban charging. Uh, yeah, that definitely sounds like a good And do we plan. do Chatamo? No. One CCS, one Chatamo? Or just dual CCS? Their NAX isn't ready yet, so they're going to send us a NAX retrofit as soon as possible. No Chatamo, dual CCS. So one CCS, one NAX eventually, but it'll ship with dual CCS. Right. And we'll just swap the cable when it's ready. Right. Damn, this is freaking exciting. <laughs> we are pulling off here to the Love Station. We love Loves. It's a great place to go. And um, fill this up with some gas, grab some waters, possibly some lunch, because we have not eaten today. But I just love how they always have dog parks, well-maintained usually as well. And... Uh, We are all fueled up, just over 12 gallons. What, uh, what'd you get? Uh, water and chips. Water and chips? I think that sounds good. Let's hit the road. All right. <laughs> well, uh, you know, not really feeling Carl's Jr. for lunch. All right, let's rock and roll. Pulling out of the loves, quick in and out. Uh, decided to not have lunch there and uh, just got some chips and snacks, salt and vinegar for me and cool ranch for you that's right we have 470 miles predicted we're still averaging on the whole trip so far 30 miles to the gallon yeah we technically don't have to stop no just setting it on the highway let this thing blow some carbon out of the motor Assist and 
and uh, we will go hold on the battery charge because we were in all wheel drive and hold seems to be the best way to keep the engine on, kind of not use the battery system because we're going to be doing a bunch of driving in the Monterey area, I imagine, and uh, yeah, want to have electric power for that. So I, I let it drop down to about 75% state of charge, locked in hold, that way it doesn't sit full all day, and uh, off we go. Tesla semis, we just passed the factory, and uh, yeah, they're all cruising around, it's awesome. We are new boots scooting through Reno. That's right, I was looking for La Zapataria La Bailarina, I think is what it's called. <laughs> the boot store. La Zapataria Bailarina. That's the new boot goofing. New boot. New boot goofing? New boot goofing place. Yeah. Every time I come to Reno, I always think, did the Reno 911 do this city a service or a disservice? I uh, probably made it more of a joke. It, it, I know. I wonder what the police think about Reno 911. That is one of my all-time... I don't really watch much TV, but I will watch every episode of Reno 911 on replay. Really? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they would bring it back. Well, there you have it, Show everyone around. They don't need to see me. Okay, they can see the Stardust Plaza. There you go. Beautiful Dancing Reno. Unlimited. Yeah, and Reno's gorgeous. Actually, it is beautiful here. There's some amazing driving roads in these mountains. We're about to go up Donner Pass out this way. And so we got a lot of elevation gain to come here in the Pole Star, and then we'll lose it down on the other end. And we're only uh, 330 miles away from our destination, getting pretty close. It's really a super easy drive in a gas car. Yeah, I think you made that point clear. Okay. <laughs> it's definitely... This is the future. <laughs> yeah, this is the future of uh, transportation here. That's right. All these people need to understand they should just go buy a gas car if they want to get places. <laughs> and this pavement change, boom, we're in California. Very good. We're just about to head up now into the mountains towards Truckee. And then over. We love this area. It's just beautiful. They get dumped on with so much snow in the winter time. And um, yeah, we have made it to California. We are now coming down Donner Pass. I've put us back in a hybrid mode because we need very little electricity to get down here. Honestly, most of what we're doing is actually recharging the battery pack. So it's a good thing I let it drain down a little bit because you can see we're north of 75% right now. So as we go down these declines, we are still charging up the battery, which is good stuff. So we'll continue along and uh, we're not too far away now. Go through Sacramento, then San Jose, and then uh, over that last mountain range into the Malibu area. This is now the fourth Tesla Semi that we've seen. And the second Cheetos one check this thing out looking damn cool isn't it yeah, Melissa what do you think that coloring that is neat they're just ripping up and down Donner Pass Bye -bye. well we are now a little bit of ways down the road much closer to our destination it's been just an easy comfortable drive temperatures all over the place at the top of Donner Pass I think we saw 70 degrees Fahrenheit we saw a peak of 114, and we're now down to 102 as we're traversing uh, I-5, heading over to um, head towards uh, Gilroy, where we'll then go, you know, sort of west right to the ocean on that little road. But uh, yeah, we stopped. We got some Chick-fil-A very quickly, but we didn't stop for fuel. So it's now time for our third and final fuel stop of the trip. Is that true? Because we had our first stop in Fort Collins. So right. This will be our fourth. First stop in Fort Collins. Second stop in Park City. Right. And then the third stop was earlier today at the Lugs. Yep. And so now this will be our fourth and final. And uh, that's very easy. We technically three fuel stops because we left. We could have left Fort Collins. Right, yeah. And we're technically arriving here. So really two fuel stops, but one on either end. Uh, just great to see the range and this isn't even that big of a tank so that's easy and the biggest 
differences. Like electric cars can have all the range in the world, which a lot of them have great range. For example, the Lucid, my dad's Lucid has 516 miles of EPA range, about 400 and something miles of real world driving range. That's not far off of this car, but this car I can refuel to 100% in two minutes. And that car, it takes an hour and a half to charge to 100%. And so with an electric car, you're never getting the full range because you're never charging to 100% other than your initial starting energy and so that's why we do the 10 percent challenge on our reviews channel which is how much range do you get for 15 minutes of charging that's about all i ever want to spend in a charger to me that's the real range of the car that matters and i think the best we've seen so far is about 140 145 miles versus this is you know 450 miles or 500 miles for a much shorter stop so there's still a big gap so for a lot of people that are thinking about electric vehicle range, range doesn't matter. It's how quickly can you fill up the range on a road trip. But That's do you think matters. having this being a PHEV has helped with road tripping at all? Almost zero. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's we've useless. just carried around a whole bunch of batteries and motors for nothing. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, we were able to regen every time we slow down, which is nice. But I'm also kind of managing the battery pack where I've locked it out, where I'm just running combustion, where I have the battery locked at 75% state of charge and, uh, you know, basically just, just running on fuel. So, yeah, PHEVs do not help with road trips. But what it is nice is if you just have one car, you can still drive this one around town fully electric 99% of the time. Yeah, that's true. So that's the thing. The thing that I don't like about most PHEVs is their performance in electric mode sucks. Even this car, when you drive it in electric mode, sucks. It's slow. So if they could just have the same equal performance, gas or electric, then I'd be all in. But they just put these weak four-cylinder engine and weak <laughs> electric system in this one car. And this car is very compromised because of it. This thing would be way cooler if they put in a twin turbo V8 or a plaid drivetrain. They just went, you know, extreme combustion or extreme electric. I think it'd be made way better. But part of the reason I like this car is because it's kind of weird and not perfect. So yeah, well, that is my thoughts so far into the drive. We've covered up to this point. Uh, for some reason it's glitching out. No, it's not. We've done 1,212.2 miles. <laughs> We've averaged just about 30 miles to the gallon. So it's been a great road tripper, that's for sure. Cannot get a better GT car. I mean, maybe you could, but uh, you know, one that can do it all. Gas, electric, and cover miles like nothing else. And be cool. So far, this is good. And the driver assistance has been wonderful. Hasn't phantom braked once. So that's been very <laughs> nice. <laughs> we are now taking, I believe, the final exit from Major Highway as we get off on this little side road towards Gilroy. This is still a highway, but it's not like a major one. And um, we have 30 miles of fuel left, so I think we'll top up. We have basically just under an eighth of a tank. So we'll go to, uh, yeah, whichever station. Wow, fuel prices here are definitely crazier than... Uh, like this station is 20 cents a gallon more than that station. I've never really thought about all this stuff, but then this one's 30 cents a gallon cheaper. So why why is 76 is so much cheaper? Rocky? I don't know. 549, this is 529. So why is this one so much cheaper? Is this worse fuel or is it fuel the same? I don't, you know, it's, you, there's an argument to be made here. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a dollar per gallon more than we just paid in Nevada. Wow. Which seems quite extreme. That is extreme. Um, anyway. Welcome to California. Welcome to California. It's uh, 94 degrees out, it's cooling off. Nice. And we got one of your favorite things right here. Mobile food. We are pulling out of the fueling station. I've just locked the battery in hold mode checking to make sure I didn't bring the cable with me. We didn't, and I closed the cap because uh, I don't feel job. very much. These are the things that I have to remind myself to think of. I think I've only fueled up uh, combustion cars maybe 20 times this year, something like that, which, you know, compared to the amount of charging stops that I've had. 
that was actually a derated session, believe it or not. That was, uh, we, I, I've been calculating, we, we can fuel a gallon in roughly six seconds normally. This one was about 10 seconds. Wow. So it definitely, uh, you know, felt slower yeah. than normal. Yeah, um, that's not good. Do you know where you're going? No. Okay. I think we need navigation. Yeah, we do. Okay. Cruising down the 101 here, we are about eight miles from our exit and 30 miles from where we are headed. Um, Looks like Monterey weather. Yep, typical California coastal weather up ahead. Temperatures already dropped to 68 degrees. All is normal. Uh, we're doing this update for some reason. I can't remember what it was. Why were we going to do a little clip here? Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know, but uh, we're currently looking for some cars to see if there's anything spicy on the road. Yeah, so we far, we have a GTR. We saw one Ferrari F430, one GTR, and that's it. Like, where are all the cars? I guess they're all at the event. So, or driving into the event. But so far, we haven't seen any signs of anything spicy going on here. I would like to get the, this car cleaned up, uh, but I can't just run it through like a normal car wash because the waxes will make the satin finish shinier. Colton will lose his mind. So I need to find a matte paint safe hand wash situation. So that might be difficult to find. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, but... Yeah. Uh... I really can't remember why we're doing this clip. Just an update. Just an update. We're on the 101. Now you're updated. Now you're updated. Well, Monterey is only 15 miles this way, according to that sign. And so far, still have not seen any cool cars. So we're on the lookout for something interesting. The coolest thing we've seen this whole trip were four semis and that Model X on red wheels, which just doesn't work. But um, yeah. It'll get there, don't worry. We'll You're just get getting there. anxious. We'll, we'll see some stuff. I just want to see some cars. You'll see some cars, lots of cars. Yeah. It's like they made this whole event for cars. I'm not sure about it though. Yeah, I mean, that's all I care about cars. Pretty high school. Yeah, uh, actually, I filmed a video here once. I can't remember what or when or why, but right over here. Hmm. Well, we have found ourselves on some great roads here in the area. We're not very far away. And the one thing I wanted to point out, I remember why we did the last clip. Look at the time of arrival, 647. That is almost exactly with what Apple Maps said we'd get there this morning. And what I found was we'd make up some time on each leg and then we stop for fuel and then we get back in the car and make it up again. And it was very accurate from the beginning. So I have to give them props for that. Just cool stuff everywhere. Absolutely loving it. The views are amazing, and the Polestar is the perfect car for this type of road, and uh, we're just having fun cruising. But it's certainly a lot faster than that thing in front of us. Well, let's head over to the uh, event now, and then we'll see what happens at this Acura situation. I think they're unveiling the new Acura ZDX Golf GTI just there. Good stuff. car hauler here. Look at this thing. Dang. Sign me up. Okay, well we pretty much arrived. We're one mile away from the destination as we make our way in. So I believe we have to turn left here. As we do so, I will put the car into pure mode. So now we are basically uh, off of combustion and all on electric. That do not enter sign freaked me out, but I think they mean don't enter that side of the highway. We yeah. are allowed to enter here. <laughs> ID4, no way. Okay, so here we go. Electric mode as we cruise in quietly. No one wants to hear this four cylinder refrigerator run. No outlet, narrow road. Let's go. You join us now at the Carmel Valley Ranch, where we just saw, maybe you can hear, like four GT3 RSs pull out, <laughs> which is just amazing. So they said, take our third left. I've lost track already, but we 
be cool just to cruise around and see the cars of people staying here and all that stuff. Basically, I think we're going to do a lot of perusing, driving around, just just looking for cool cars. I mean, this is like vacation, just being able to go and see all these amazing machines in one concentrated place. I'm really excited. Of course, we have to film some new launches for the YouTube channel and Acura ZDX and all these things, but that's not what really excites me. Speaking of Acura ZDX, look here. There's actually a first generation Acura ZDX at the Acura ZDX 2.0 launch. This is such a rare car. Wow, cool. So I'm guessing we're in the right place because you don't see those often. Cadillac Lyric just ahead, coming down the hill. Um, also built the ZDX is on the same uh, thing. That's actually a taxi, a limo Lyric. How about that? But here we are, we're pulling into the Acura event. So let's do it. Emotional design and unyielding commitment to performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the first fully electric vehicle from Acura, the 2024 ZDX Type S. We're just doing a little driving around after the Acura event, event now, and we've come down to Carmel by the Sea, and it is just gorgeous over here. Isn't that crazy, Alyssa? It's beautiful and low tide. I can smell it. Yeah. Well, let's go find some cars. Let's go downtown. Yeah. Well, we're cruising through downtown, and look at this. We have Euro-plated Porsches over here. Just some crazy hardware all around. Nice green Range Rover, perfect spec. Pretty tight through here. Just passed a whole bunch of Rolls Royces. Here we have some American muscle. Oh, the car thing is on. Florida plated Porsches, new i4. All the car spotters are out. What a cool vibe for sure. Definitely gonna find a place to park this thing and drive around a little bit. There's another Rolls Royce on the left. Oh wow, it is just so cool. And Myers Manx here on the right side. Just absolutely cool. You can see photos, cameras all around. Let this guy come through. Let's just cruise up. Oh my goodness, this is this is insane. We got people walking. Just absolutely crazy through here. So we'll do our best to squeeze if we can. And uh, you know, try not to hit anyone or anything. Just a little bit tight. Look at this. McLaren with uh, some, <laughs> I don't know, Saudi plates of some kind. Wow, this is, this is truly incredible. We need to find a place to uh, park up. Yeah, perhaps right here on the corner. Straight behind the Ferrari on the right. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think we'll flip around and park right on that corner. Golf R here, beautiful Bentley, of course, just, oh, we found the place. Let's do some car spotting. We have a Ventador Roadster Urus. Oh my God, complete craziness going on here. <laughs> the crackle tune. Anyway, we've parked up the, the Polestar. Probably should have gotten a little closer to the curb there. 
But, uh, oh well, F-150 lightning slammed over here. What the heck's going on with this? What? Aired out F-150 lightning. Whoa, that looks freaking wild, doesn't it? Gorgeous SLS Roadster right there. ZR1 right here. Wow, Toyota Corolla. <laughs> we haven't even like left the car and I've just been like eye candy everywhere. I think we should go up here and see what's going on. This is cool. Well, you can see things are happening downtown. The police are using zero electric bikes over here. That is pretty cool. And uh, so zero uh, noise that's just silently cruising around, just urging people to stay out of the streets more or less, but just a uh, really cool experience. Nice little NC Miata here for Jordan. He would like that. So, uh, and then you got some like guys that just regular traffic cruising along. Yeah, crazy things. Hyundai's ends around here. Yeah. Definitely not a place you want to go too fast, but everyone's enjoying the car spotting, that's for sure. Got a DeLorean V8 M2, gorgeous right here. GT3 RS, of course, absolutely great. TRX, just a whole mix of stuff all over the place from super high end, like 300 SL Gull Wings, my absolute dream car, to TRXs. That is the beauty of Car Week, just a little bit of everything, and uh, it's always a great time. Pickup 4x4 lifted new G. That's pretty wild. And then just V12 Aston 911 parked really far from the curb. <laughs> and you get a uh, an FF coming by. Or is that a GTC4? Nope, GTC4 Lusso. So cool. That's actually one of my favorite Ferraris. And another lifted G, except that's the factory 4x4 squared. So sick. Love the little thing as well. Epic. We are now pulling into Monterey behind a GT2 RS and a Audi TT RS. Well, it's like, must be straight piped. It sounds amazing. But uh, we have to say we had an amazing road trip in the Polestar. We averaged 30 miles per gallon over 1,316 miles, 29.3 miles per gallon. Um, and it's just been an amazing road tripping vehicle. So highly recommend, uh, you know, the Polestar one, if you ever get a chance to drive one, it's a cool opportunity. I was never thought I'd have the chance to own this car, but of course the circumstances worked out where Polestar agreed to sell it to me and I'm certainly not going to keep it in a glass case in a garage. We are out here using it, enjoying it, and uh, you know, bringing it out. And lots of people were taking photos of it. Everyone was enjoying it, just as we're enjoying all the other cars. So using it as intended. And uh, I kind of like that it's all dirty and covered in bugs because we really do use this car and used it as a GT car. And wow, that. <laughs> the TT sounds incredible. That's the one thing this car doesn't do is it sounds like a washing machine. It's really not good. But uh, yeah, just pulling in here, I can see a Volkswagen bus. We can see a whole bunch of cool cars. So let's go. We're going to go meet up with some friends that are out on the water over here. And uh, that's the end of the road trip. Alyssa, your thoughts on the Polestar 1 now that you've done, I don't know, six or 7,000 miles in this car? <laughs> Uh, it's actually surprisingly really comfortable to road trip. I like my back or back does not hurt at all sitting in this car for a long period of time. Sound system's good. It drives nicely. It's a little bumpy like you can see just with my camera work. Yeah, we can always uh, back off the suspension too. Yeah, but uh, that's a Passat W8 wagon. Wow! I think that concludes. See you guys on our next one. See you on another one. Bye-bye. And I thought you guys would want to see this. We're at our hotel. There's a cool clown shoe over here. S-Class Honda Clarity. Uh, and of course, they have EV charging, which is great. We did not uh, look ahead of time, but that worked out awesome. And so here we are charging up. Very nice. 
fans are going on the pole start. It says it'll be done at 4.30 a.m. Perfect, as we're leaving at about 7 a.m. And uh, we're only in about a half charge. I really preserved it because I wasn't sure if we had charging or not. But this is great because we can do all of our driving this week fully electric and not burn any combustion. So we'll just leave this thing in EV mode for the next five days or four days that we're here. And we'll top up here when needed. So pretty freaking awesome. Uh, thought you would be curious to see how this goes. It's just after midnight. I don't expect any more electric cars to come. This guy's actually hogging the spot. So if another electric car did come, they could go there, unplug that guy and juice up. It's a plug-in hybrid as is this, but that has a much smaller battery pack. So anyway, we're off to bed. Good night.